But what exactly are public-private partnerships? And how exactly do they help develop the country and the economy? Warren de Guzman has the details. President of the Republic of the Philippines. When President Aquino came into power, he inherited a country lacking in infrastructure and facing a multi-billion peso budget deficit. These conditions usually mean bad news for a developing economy, but the president had a plan. Ito ang magiging solusyon. Mga public-private partnerships. Kahit wala pa pong pirmahang nangyayari dito, masasabi kong maganda ang magiging bunga ng maraming usapin. May mga nagpakita na po ng interes. Gustong magtayo ng expressway na mula Maynila, tatahak ng Bulacan, Hueva Ecija, Hueva Vizcaya, hanggang sa dulo ng Cagayan Valley. Nang hindi gugugol ang Estado kahit na po piso. The president wants private investors to come in and spend for large infrastructure projects the government can't afford. The National Economic and Development Authority is now busy lining up priority projects, including light rail transits, tollways, and dams. But because these projects are very costly, the government will have to convince private partners to come in. And they will only come in if they are sure of a return on investment. But there is a different kind of private-public or public-private partnership already in play here in the country. This is a strategic corporate community project. It's like a private-public partnership, but it's smaller in scale. Also, the focus is different. Here, you're looking for sustainable development for the community or the public partner. In the larger PPPs, you're looking for sustainable returns for the private partner. While the larger PPPs bring in infrastructure like roads and bridges, this kind of PPP teaches skills and provides jobs. The project gives out-of-school youths and unemployed individuals the chance to learn upholstery. It also gives them direct employment in the lucrative furniture export industry in Cebu. Some graduates of the program are already working for the internationally known designer, Kenneth Cobonpue. It is a result of bilateral cooperation with the German government through German Technical Cooperation, or GTZ. GTZ has another PPP in Leyte, this time working with coconut farmers. Uh, well, the PPP uh, is a mechanism uh, of the GTZ uh, in order to uh, facilitate the development uh, in rural areas, especially because we're working in uh, rural development. And uh, this is a small uh, PPP, maybe if we compare it with the vision of uh, President Aquino, uh, this is uh, very small, very grassroots. The idea is to link uh, the coconut farmers uh, to the supply chain and uh, we partnered with uh, a fire uh, which is composed of uh, 27 uh, cooperatives and uh, SE Global Cocoa Products. Uh, we're more grassroots, we're more uh, development oriented and we really want to uh, link uh, the different stakeholders in the value chain. Aside from the funding, these smaller PPPs provide communities with technical know-how and forge lasting relationships between the private partner and the community. It's very difficult to say what is better, no? or what is, uh, has, uh, achieves a better, bigger Im impact because in the end you need no money on the one hand, but if you don't have the capabilities in place, you also won't make it. Yeah? GTZ believes this is the real key to sustainable development. Warren de Guzman, ABS-CBN Business. GTZ has also been busy setting up support systems for local government units, one of which includes an early warning system for floods in Leyte. Warren de Guzman returns with this report. On February 17, 2006, a massive landslide hit St. Bernard, southern Leyte, burying more than 1,000 people. The German Technical Cooperation Group, GTZ, was very active in the Visayas at the time. They were asked to find a way to prevent such a disaster from happening again. First of all, it's always that you bring the various stakeholders together 
in order to think about what could be done uh, in order to mitigate disasters. And the solution we had always, we had at hand was to help municipalities and the most vulnerable municipalities in, in Leyte Island um, to come up with disaster preparedness plans. Dr. Walter Salzer says more than relief and rescue, preparedness is the best answer to disasters. We saw that in certain watershed areas, especially uh, where a lot of floods are, are happening every year, um, that we would need to establish early warning systems uh, in order to, to warn the population ahead of time when, when floods are coming. Dr. Salzer is still in Leyte to this day, overseeing the training and maintenance of the eight early warning systems installed in Leyte using affordable radio frequency technology. Because they are manned by stakeholders or people within the flood-prone communities, they have been very effective. Ang experience dito is 2006, Milenio and Reming. Uh, maraming napinsala. 2006 din yung, ano, yung landslide dun sa, sa St. Bernard. March 2007, nagmowa nag sila. By, by dating ng rainy season ng 2007 up to February 2008, ganun din yung nangyari. Monsoon, flooding, tsaka flooding due to typhoons, pero na menos yung damage dun sa livestock, tsaka sa properties, tapos zero casualties siya. GTZ is set to meet with Weather Bureau Pagasa this November to discuss installing these warning systems across the country. It is also in the process of developing early warning systems for landslides and earthquakes for local government units. Warren de Guzman, ABS-CBN Business. The G20 meeting in South Korea is over. Now, did they find a solution to the currency wars? Find out when Business Nightly returns.